Thanks everybody for joining us today and spending a little bit of time with us this afternoon to talk about uh, Starship and the SAP Business One integration. Today we're going to go over how Starship can help you streamline your international shipping process. Just a little bit about uh, V Technologies first before we uh, get started. Uh, the company has been around for over 30 years, starting in the late 80s with a customer base of over 10,000 users. Uh, we support uh, both UPS and FedEx and uh, have expanded that list to over 30 different uh, carriers over the years. And uh, today we're going to focus on the SAP Business One integration. Where Starship can help you tie into Business One is all of the other applications that may be in your uh, your sales workflow. We have the ability to tie in with warehouse management, EDI, uh, shopping carts, and kind of pull all of those different um, points of entry for different uh, orders in your workflow all together into one seamless process by using a common desktop and Starship. So you have one user interface uh, for all of your different types of transactions, regardless of where you're getting the orders from. Talking about Starship and international shipping, how is it that Starship's going to help you? Something pretty unique that we do um, in the uh, ERP space is the ability to link all of your uh, line items or product information to the uh, commodity data that would be necessary to populate all of your export documentation. So if you have that information natively within the item master in Business One, you have the ability to map over fields but if uh, Starship, or excuse me, if Business One does not have that data that's needed in order to populate the form, so you can build relationships between your line items and all the relevant um, Schedule B codes and harmonized codes and descriptions to populate on your uh, export documentation. Uh, Starship supports both a paperless and a printed uh, export format. So you have the commercial invoice, the uh, USMCA, which is replacing the, uh, the former NAFTA paperwork and the United States Certificate of Origin. Um, with the printing of the actual forms, you have logic or print conditions that can be added uh, to the documents at the, uh, the document level. So you could have, say, you know, 10 different iterations of a particular form, and you can have rules or conditions that will trigger that based on the ship via or uh, the customer or product, any kind of uh, data that we have coming out of the ERP or conditions within the shipment, uh, you can have rules around that that would trigger the printing to, to occur automatically, plus the number of copies that you need. There's also a shipper's letter of instruction available. So if you're using a broker for any of your shipments, a Starship could give you the inland bill of lading uh, for freight to the ports, and then also the shipper's letter of instruction, basically a manifest of everything that you're going to be preparing. You can provide that to your broker, and then they can arrange for the transportation and uh, set up any of the additional forms that you need to clear customs. Uh, we offer ACE integration with the government's website for any commodities over $2,500 in value. Uh, we can trigger that at the item level, so you can set that as a preference if you need to re, uh, uh, return an ITN number and file for that uh, with the government. We have hooks built into the, uh, the website to do that for you automatically. And with that, uh, we always stay up to date on the latest changes for supporting EEI filing. Uh, so those are coming up here later in September. We'll have a patch available for that in a, a future release. Just a quick look here at the number of uh, carriers that we have, some names and logos that you may recognize. Uh, Starship has uh, integration for both small package and LTL carriers, and we're supporting those uh, both in the United States and now natively in uh, Canada. So you have uh, some Canadian carriers also mixed in there as well. So if you have uh, operations in Canada, we can support uh, both UPS and FedEx natively with their web services. Uh, we also support uh, through EasyPost, the ability to ship with Purolator, Canada Post, and Canpar. Uh, Starship also has a basic bill of lading module available as well. Uh, so if there's other carriers that you don't see here, you can always add SCAT codes um, to the system and have the ability to print out your paperwork for those carriers as well. And with that, we're going to switch screens here and get into the product demo.
Uh, this is the Starship uh, user interface that you're looking at here. Uh, this is the more uh, modern, fresh update look with our web clients here. Uh, you have uh, a couple of different flavors. You have a desktop version. You also have um, the web UI, and those are both uh, available with the on-prem product. There's also a newer cloud or online version of Starship as well. And all those are available with the SAP Business One integration. Working with Business One, typically you're uh, working off of um, a, a sales transaction. So you have uh, support for orders, deliveries, and invoices. Uh, Starship can move transactions uh, upon completing shipments from a status uh, when it's an order, we can move that to a delivery, or we can also take a delivery uh, with any packaging that may be associated to it. So if you're using a warehouse management solution to do the fulfillment and pack out, we can pick up the packaging directly from Business One in a delivery. Uh, you also have a preference to take a delivery and turn that into an invoice. Uh, you'll, you could also leave the uh, transaction in this, the state that it's in, so you could write directly back to an order, a delivery, or an invoice. Um, if you have barcodes on any of your pick sheets or paperwork, you have the ability to wand over that, or you can simply enter in the order number here. Starship also will give you kind of these, uh, a view of all of your pending transactions over here, so you can multi-select transactions. You could also apply filters, so you can drill down into a subset of data, uh, depending on what it is that you want to see. Uh, so all of the fields that are exposed in the, uh, the header here that you have the ability to sort on, you can look at dates, status, uh, particular customer, any of the address fields. So in this case, I have it filtered to look at a particular customer's transaction. So I'm looking at all the orders for this particular customer. Now we're going to go ahead and select the transaction and get started with shipping now. So again, you can scan that pick ticket or you can select the order and Starship's going to talk to Business One, read all the data off either the SQL or the HANA tables and bring that into our manifest here. You'll see all the widgets uh, moving left to right here. You have um, all the order information here. You have the return address and ship to address. That'll be pulled in from Business One automatically. We also do value translations on the carrier and service level. So however you have that set up, Starship can uh, bring over the appropriate service level automatically. Or you also have the ability to switch carriers. So if you give the user permission, they can go in and pick a different carrier. Uh, transportation billing can also be uh, pulled over as well. So if you have collect or third party accounts, uh, we can assign the freight charges to any of those. And the same thing for your duties and taxes. Got some of the international fields here. So this is going to Canada. Um, all of that information will populate automatically. So we also do value translations on the uh, reason for export and the terms of sale. Uh, based on the flags, if we had a, um, a product that requires the EEI filing, you would see that here and you can automatically file that. Starship will um, submit that electronically to the ACE website and you'll get back an ITN number via email. You can set up Starship to parse that value out of your uh, your email, or you can click on the inquire button right here. It'll go out and pull that from the government's website. In this case, these products are considered exempt, so we don't need to do that. We have uh, our packaging information here. Uh, Starship has, uh, as I mentioned, the ability to pull packaging out of the delivery, or we can also record packaging in Starship and push that back into Business One to be associated to the delivery so you can see the relationship between items and uh, the containers that they're in. Uh, if you're using license plating with a WMS, uh, you have the ability to uh, bring that in as an additional field as well. Starship can also assign unique container IDs. So if you're using EDI uh, with uh, any of your uh, Business One trading partners, uh, Starship has the ability to print the 128 labels, assign the serialized container ID, and we can handshake with your EDI solution as well. You also have the packing assistant. Uh, so this could be the first view that you see. You can set up a preference on uh, which screen you want to go to. And this will show you the uh, relationship between the quantity of products and the containers that they're in. Uh, Starship also has a packaging database. So 
all of your packages can be packed up and put into a custom container. We can push that back into business one as well. That can have the weights and uh, dimensions associated to it. If you have a scale, that'll be detected here and just place the product on the scale and it'll read the weight in. If you have weights in inventory, Starship will bring over the weights and we'll add those up across the quantity of product in the box. And you can also use your item weights that way as well. So we've got everything packed up. At this point, we're ready to ship out if we want. We can leave the carrier uh, in service with uh, UPS Standard to Canada, or you have the option of uh, doing some rate shopping. We'll give you a breakdown here of all the charges. You'll see the list price, your cost, and then plus any kind of handling that we may have added to the shipments. So you can have rules. Uh, Starship has freight rules that are conditions that could mark up or discount the freight, or in certain instances where you may have free freight, we could even zero that out. And you can drill down into the rules here to see how much uh, additional handling was added to the shipment. Rate shopping between uh, carriers that you're licensed for is available as well. So of course we rated it automatically based on the carrier and service that came in from business one, but we may want to look at other services that could potentially get this there either faster or cheaper. So Starship can be used to run rate shopping. You can also set up rules to have that automatically rate shop or select the, the carrier for you. We have a ship view rules and rate shopping rules that could also add some logic to that process. Looks like we picked the right service. UPS standard to Canada is our best rate. So we can see that has the cheapest price, but we may want to get the product there faster. So if speed is critical, uh, you can also put in the date and the time here when it needs to be there by. So you can see just for a little bit more money, um, FedEx needed it there in two days. So if, if it needs to be there faster, maybe we go with FedEx. You also have the post office here, but they can't guarantee a transit time. Based on cost, we're gonna go ahead and ship this out with UPS. We'll, we'll uh, save it there. Go ahead and process our transaction. Uh, with that, uh, Starship's going to hit the uh, UPS API, uh, get your labels, your documents, send all those jobs to the printer. Uh, here you just see kind of a preview of the uh, commercial invoice document that will go with the shipment. And with that, the cursor will come back over here so you can process that next transaction. So let's take a quick look back in business one at the results of that shipment. So Starship will calculate the freight, including any kind of handling and plug that into your freight field here. Uh, we have it set to just leave it as an open order. So someone in the front office can go ahead and move this along to the next stage in the workflow, whether that be a delivery or an invoice. And then we're going to write the detail on the shipment here back into the pick and pack remarks. And this can be customized to have whatever level of detail you're looking for here, It'll give you some basic information about when it went out, when it's going to get there, how it was sent, the piece count with the tracking information. Uh, but you can customize those notes in the uh, right back setup inside of Starship. Uh, if you're shipping deliveries, as I mentioned, you can also have um, packaging sent both directions. If you have a delivery that exists, we can read the packaging in, or we can also deposit the packaging detail back into the delivery. take a look back in Starship at some of the other documents that we can produce for that transaction. So if you're shipping internationally, uh, we have all of the latest changes uh, for supporting shipments into uh, Canada and Mexico with the USMCA. Uh, replaces the former NAFTA certificate of origin. So you have uh, the ability to produce this form. Uh, as I mentioned, you also have the UPS format we saw it just popped up. So you can pick and choose between the uh, carrier's format or you can use kind of the generic Starship forms. The benefit of using the Starship format is you have the ability to go in and modify the template so you can do some formatting changes. You can add uh, logos or branding, any kind of uh, barcodes or additional data that you want to mark up the form with. We'll take a look at that in just a second. You also have the shipper's letter of instruction. So if you require an SLI for that particular transaction, we have that as well. Uh, Starship can also give you custom labels and um, packing lists as well. So you have the ability to add logos. You can see we 
plug in the VTech logo here. Um, you can add any kind of data elements or barcodes that you want to your packing list. You have a couple different formats here with the packing list and label hybrid. You could also get that just on a standard thermal label. Let's take a look here at our other portrait landscape format. So this is uh, essentially what is on the, the outside, the finished results that, that print out. Switch over to our templates. This is what's underneath the form itself. Let me call that up here so we can see it side by side. So this, would, this is what would be printed out or you have the PDF that would be produced for your USMCA document. And these are all the data elements and fields that are behind the form. So you have uh, this block of text. You can open that up and add any of your own text, wipe out our verbiage there. You can move that around on the page. You have these objects over on the left-hand side that you can drag and drop onto the document. So you can put logos on there, draw on the page, any barcodes that you want to add. Uh, so any of the data that we have can be barcoded and placed on the document. Uh, you have bands of text where you have columns of data that line up here, individual fields and blocks of text. So any of this information here that we have, you can take that and easily modify that, redirect it to another field, or you have the ability to add fields to your documents as well. So highly customizable. Uh, you can just navigate to any of the uh, areas of uh, data that we have here, or there's a master list at the bottom with every possible field. So if you see that data on the form, you have the ability to grab that, place it anywhere you'd like to see that appear on the documents. When you get all the formatting changes done, back over here. Do a simple save as, and that will produce another document that you can then produce. All right, let's take a look at the email next. So as I mentioned, you can, you know, PDF forms, you can also print out any of the hard copies. Um, if you have customers that require copies of any of the export documents, you ha do have the ability to have those automatically sent out to your customer or anybody else. Uh, that needs to see those forms. Uh, so there's an email template similar to the printed forms. You have the ability to customize that here, uh, do any kind of formatting changes. You have uh, logos and graphics, colors that you have the ability to modify. Let me uh, grab an email here. So you can mark that up any way you'd like, have links back into your site or your carts. One of the cool things though with Starship is you can grab any attachments. So any of those export documents that we're creating, uh, those can automatically be generated, and if the email templates are set up correctly, copy of the uh, the paperwork for Canada or anywhere else in the world, your commercial invoice, any of those forms can be generated, saved as PDFs, and then automatically inserted into the ship notification that goes out. So puts that in the hands of your customer or your broker, whoever needs to see the forms, and uh, saving you the time of having to manually print those out and put them in a folder or put them in the box will automatically just take care of notifying them. It's pretty cool. You have the ability to also set a send schedule so you can have these send out automatically. They can be sent on a particular schedule, a certain time of day or a function, or they can be queued up and they go to a folder and someone is tasked with going into the software and uh, sending those out. Those will always be there as well. So if you need to resend the information, you'll have access to that here as well. Just a quick look behind the scenes at what we're doing with the item information. We're going to get into our setup menus here. And we'll take a look at our products. So as I mentioned, we can keep a cross-reference of any international commodity data and uh, triggers for forms that uh, you may need to print out here. Uh, we have the uh, business one part number here, some standard fields that are coming out of the item master. And then if you don't have any of those international uh, flags set within business one, Starship can fill in the gaps and plug in any of the necessary information. So the product is smart enough to learn the behavior um, and, and what, uh, what additional fields need to be gathered and have that automatically saved with the item record in Starship so that can be used in future uh, shipments. Or you can also, run an import so you have the ability to bring data into Starship 
and set up your item master in Starship to have all these various properties. So you have the country of origin, Schedule B code, and description that are flagged here. Um, whether or not you need to file with ACE if that ITN number is required. And then you have the flags here if the certificate of origin or the USMCA forms are required as well. So that's there in Starship, something kind of unique to what we do. Um, help you automate that whole process of filing the paperwork. Let's take a look at the paperwork itself. So there are profiles that are set up for uh, your printing. So um, that has a list of forms that you've enabled and you'll see those here. Those can be sent to PDF or a particular uh, printer. Let's go ahead and edit our forms here. And you can see you have all of the um, uh, set up here. You can send that automatically to a printer, have it PDF. You can do both as well. PDF archives can be saved into a directory outside of Starship. Uh, you also have, um, you have the ability to specify which carriers you want to for this. You can have a preview pop up. So like we saw with the uh, UPS uh, commercial invoice, we can preview that before the job is sent to the printer. You can also stage the number of copies here. So if we want to um, have this automatically print three copies, one for ourselves, one for the carrier, one for customs, however many copies you need that can automatically be set up. And you have the conditions here. This is where we could set a rule to tell Starship under these certain circumstances, go ahead and print this version of the document. So here we're gonna set up a basic rule. And we're going to do it based on who we're sending it to here. There we go. We're gonna do it based on the country. You've got different qualifiers here. And we're gonna add that in for Canada or Mexico, that would work too. There we are. Okay, so now whenever we ship to Canada, we're gonna automatically uh, produce this form, print that out, send off the PDFs with the emails, kind of automate that whole process. These will always be here in history, so anybody with access to Starship can go in and look at the forms. That leads me to the dashboard. Of course, you're gonna have copies of the information um, in directories outside of Starship. They'll be attached to emails. Um, it'll be shipment detail that we're plugging back into business one. Dashboard is really more for your front office staff to need to go in and do a lookup on a particular shipment, gives you some uh, visibility to your, your freight spend and your history over time. There's a number of uh, basic reports uh, to give you some analytics here on uh, where your freight is going to, how much you're spending over a period of time. We have these widgets here that will give you uh, a visual report or graph on that. Uh, you also have all of your um, Starship uh, history here as well. So that can be set with the date range. Um, any of the fields that we have coming out of Business One, you can do queries on those. So your order, your PO number, customer ID, you can easily find anything that way. But really any data that Starship has, we can run queries on that to find a particular transaction. Uh, this can be referenced by anybody in the organization. The uh, dashboard is freely distributed. Uh, there's no additional user licensing. So really anybody in the organization in the front office that needs access to Starship history could come in here, punch up an order and find what it is that they're looking for. So we'll go ahead and bring up this transaction here. And that'll give you visibility here to the uh, freight information. You can go in and reprint labels or documents, any of the stuff that we produced you'll have copies of that here. So again, another uh, utility that is available with the Starship license. Um, we can go ahead and close this out here. We're coming up on the bottom of our time here. Again, so my name's Chris Letner. See my email here. I'm at extension 229 if you'd like to chat. Or like I said, feel free to just call into the, uh, the sales team. And if I'm not available, any one of our other reps can get you the info that you need. I'd like to thank everybody for your time and attention today. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks and uh, have a great day.